a good night. I'm, I, my amazing husband and I went to uh, the Lion King movie um, last Saturday. So you can raise your hand if you've seen it, um, the new one. And I'll try to just be brief and tell you about my past, present, and future with the movie. And so 25 years ago, the movie was out in the United States. That was NAFTA year, 1994. And I lived in Mexico at the time. So the movie didn't really came to my hand until a pay pen pal uh, sent it in French um, in 1995. And I saw it and it was such an amazing moment. <laughs> I, I was like 14 at the time and I totally drank the Kool-Aid. And so I had a cousin that had just recently lost his father and I had to do everything to find a blockbuster in a near town to get it in Spanish with in, in English with Spanish subtitles so that they can see it and have this moment. So they did it in 1997. I finally had my cousin uh, without his father seeing the movie and he was finally able to cry about his dad and we break through and Hakuna Matata had never the same meaning after that. <laughs> So now, in 2019, um, we took our kids. There are six, three, and my mother-in-law to see the movie. And it was a completely different experience. Uh, parenthesis, my, my grandma back in Mexico was very shocked when she saw the Coca-Cola commercials with the polar bears that actually moved and drink Coca-Cola. Like she also drank the Kool-Aid, like she believed it completely and she was very shocked about it. <laughs> Since then, and thanks to NAFTA, we were able to have the Animal Planet channel like in, in the early 2000s and that was her favorite thing to watch. And so I felt like that with this new, new, new Lion King movie, you know? It's like, they're real, and they're there, and my, my kids are also drinking the Kool-Aid, but <laughs> at the same time, I feel like, no, don't watch this. Because you know how uh, somebody was talking about the Maslow Pyramid and perception? Whenever you have a different tool of uh, tools in your, in your toolbox to, to actually perceive something, the entire thing changes according to what you're able to to digest, and in 2019, this movie was not about what it was for me in 1994. And so I was like, what is this? <laughs> the lioness believe what the Lion King says? <laughs> and then all of these animals are like, yes, be alive, long live the, the lion that is gonna eat me in spring. Like, <laughs> I, I had not, <laughs> Pardon me, I'm still not vegetarian. We, we try, we're like 80, 20%, but, <laughs> but this might just be the thing that makes the trick for me. <laughs> Those yummy insects never felt more appetizing. But the most important thing is that I have a son and I have a daughter, and I really didn't want them to feel like this lioness did nothing. So back home and talking about it, there was just not enough for me to tell them that the lioness were the best in the movie. And that, and that the, is actually something that I'm not making up. So I asked them what was their favorite part. And you know, three and six year olds, they're kind of interesting creatures. They say that they're f actually their favorite part is the dundle beetle. The one that is not in the old cartoon, because all we do in ho the house is talk about compost and organic waste and food waste reduction. And so they thought it was really cool that the hair from Simba gets caught in the poop bowl that the giraffe takes, and then that's how they find out that Simba is alive. <laughs> and so today, I decide to put my giraffe skirts and take my kids to the Smithsonian Zoo to have a free conversation with the person in charge of the big cats and try to ventilate all of my, <laughs> my situations with the lioness and the herds and the Lion King. And the lady was the only person that didn't think that I was reading too much into this Disney <laughs> She says, you're actually correct, you know. Male lions are like interns in big corporations. They're invited. <laughs> 
just to make uh, you know respect to this lady, her name is Rebecca Seitz, and she's probably the next hero to come to the moth because she's probably the one that she'll be telling a nicer story here. But <laughs> the thing is, she's telling me that these lions, they come for a couple years, and there is an interbreed relationship to keep healthy, and that's a, uh, another story. But my point to Disney, if this make it to the radio is Disney, we are in 2019. It's time to start telling the truth about the lioness. <laughs> Thank you. About, and most importantly, about the circle of life. Because there are four quadrillion insects out there, and more than that, like what they say in English, a gazillion of microorganisms that are making our planet survive. And I really want Pixar and Disney to make a movie about microorganisms. So please, thank you. <laughs>